I'm just gonna pop out and sign for this. Shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Yeah, right. What was I thinking? Always schedule an hour minimum for trips to inbound freight, Chip. Or better yet, chimp someone else in a sign-in for these deliveries. Hmm, maybe I could put down one of the busboys as a receiver. Ah, uh, no, the busboys can't sign for anything. Gendarans don't have a writing Nerds! If you refuse to answer our questions, we'll be forced to bring you into custody, Gassine! Hi there, officers. Good to see you're keeping the fairgrounds safe from the dastardly forces of cuddly little puppies. Think you could take it somewhere that isn't blocking entry to my place of business? Thanks so much. What in the name of Saint Amand is going on here? Gemini Collision Works presents Life with Althar, Season 2, Episode 19, Eight Ways of Looking at a Bar Fight. So, you get away hard. I'll get Ow! What have you people been doing to my bar? Hey, Chip. Five moves over yesterday, Dorp. Yeah, right. Oh, for Mindy, would you call off your goons? Huh? Oh, Dormer, Ness, stand down. Sir, we did not breach the perimeter of the electric egg, sir. Right. The suspect was apprehended in the corridor, Commander. It's a legitimate collar. Well... Given that she's wearing an actual collar with a little tag that says Miss Sophie on it, I'd say it's pretty clear she's not sapient, wouldn't you? Now let her go. Yes, sir. I mean, that's not well, like, legally binding or anything. Okay, you can Great. Go. So now that that's We're taken care you. of... Soap on, what the hell? I step out of here for a few minutes to sign for a package at inbound freight processing, and I come back an hour later to find a couple of security biffos out front trying to arrest a cocker spaniel, Vert, spinning from the ceiling fan, stops playing three different songs at the same time, D, obviously drunk, Excuse bubbles, me? fritzing out, and hey, Churchill bot, I can see your sticky manipulators going for that bottle of antique Navonian Miel whiskey. If you're stealing some Miel, keep stealing. Absolutely not. Put it back. I can't, sir. Lord Beaverbrook was right. Soap on. Explain. Well, Chip, how to begin? See, it all started right after you left. Soap on. I need to grab this month's shipment of Drunken Angel. It should only take a couple of minutes, but you know how it goes down at inbound freight. Yep, yeah, I can hold the place down for a couple hours. Actually, I just need you to keep an eye on the bar. Because you know, the egg's technically in the Baronitia Candafaa, so technically, Stops is the one holding it down. Despite being glitched off his gourd on the goobers. And despite you being my most, and possibly only reliable employee, who has kept this place running for the past six years. Unfailingly. Without complaint. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure you know exactly where you stand around here. Got it, thanks. Which is below Stops. Yep, you are 100% clear. All right, everyone. I'm out of here. Bye. All right, Chip. See you later. Chip, before you go, I need the keys to the castle. Oh, good call, Stops. Here you go. I have absolutely no problem leaving you in charge. Bye, Chip. Bye, Sopan. Remember, I don't value you. Great. They don't respect you around here, do they, Sopan? They don't respect me, either. Tell me about it. Floor fill you up? Oh, sure, sweetie. Make it a double, why don't you? You got it. Oh, hey, Bubbles! Yeah, co-worker of exactly equal rank despite being high as before me? <sighs> Looks like there's someone at that end of the bar. Mind... tending him? Sure thing. I can see what you contribute around here, dearie. Tell me, 
Are you satisfied at this job? Well, yeah. I'm, I mean, I've worked some real dives in my day. The egg is a pretty good gig, all things considered. And Chip's a decent boss, as long as he makes sure to get everything he promises you in writing. It's just... Just that there doesn't seem to be any order around here, hmm? No system in place to appropriately award your contributions? Yeah, I guess you could put it like that. It's not really about the money, though. I mean, yeah, Chip's in the running for King of the Credit Pinchers, but it's not easy to keep a place like this turning a profit. I get that. And it's not like I don't get along with stops. It's more fun than a boot full of giggle shrimp. It's just... I do a lot around here, and... Well, a thank you would go a long way, you know? Well, I think you deserve much more than a thank you, Sopan dear. And you'll get it. You'll all get what you deserve in time. You tell him, Esther! If you say so, Mrs. F. Oh, looks like we're running low on polycarbonated seltzers. I better duck into the office for a few more cans. Did you want to top off before I go? Nope. All good here. Okay, then. Back in a sec. Excuse me. Coming through. Got it. Do uh, just get to the back there. <laughs> but how will we know if they're compatible? Just gotta get through... And once the basket of collection is full, you give it directly to the one of much anointment? Of course, my child. The collection is offered up to them on the vibro plank of gratitude. Excuse me, Althar. Father, I'm just grabbing some more poly seltzer from the back. You want another one? Let me answer your question with the confusing and elaborate parable. It is written that long ago, when some ancient zood came down from on high, he kept... Should I say yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. Pardon me, fellas? Don't skitter this shot, B. I really want that dog park. Next time we play, would you mind wagering something that benefits both of us? Hey! Miss Sophie benefits all of us, all of the time, merely by how adorable she is. Don't you go. Hey, where'd she go? Um, from... 27 bottles of space beer on wall, 27 bottles of space beer. If one of those bottles should happen to fall in the gravity field is working at You're all, 27, 26 bottles of space beer on the wall. <laughs> Hello. Did you glomp my messages, Zood? Uh, nope. Just looking for some- Dog man! I sang the five-way canzion to you every lunar cycle. And still when little shops went to peek under the pole of the wayward blessing, my blessing pot was bone dry. Yeah. Are you... okay, Stops? Just this once, man. Just this once? Grant me a full frillin' way station, you dig? That was great. Just gotta grab these cans from behind you, and... Got them. Okay then, so... Thanks. And, uh, your extravagancy? Think you could get back on stage sometime soon? You've kind of hung D out your dry up there. Oh, come on. God. Coming through. Just make this one shot, Commander, and the day shall be won. I know how to play the game, Churchill Butt. Time out, just passing through. <laughs> 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 oh, Pelinky's crooked whispers. Oh, frill me! Oh, since Sopan, please allow Althar to make assistance! Thanks, Althar. Ah, oh, crap. Looks like Bubbles is having trouble handling the line. Would you mind grabbing the rest of these while I... Yes! Althar can make gathering of the disordered beverage cylinders while you are attending your many other duties. Please do not have concern. Althar is most content to be of usefulness. Thanks, Althar. At least someone appreciates how much I do around here. Straight. Coming through! Bubbles? You alright? Sorry about the line, Sopan. Things got a little sticky over here. Bang, this place would disintegrate if I wasn't here. 
Hi, sorry about the wait. What can I get for you? So fun. What the hell? So, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Huh. So you were over at the bar, and suddenly someone's drink starts splooping out all over the place, and then out of nowhere, there's a bar fight. That tells me nothing. You know who could tell you exactly what happened, as well as everything that ever happened in the history of the universe? Wikipedia? Lieutenant Frawl. Uh-huh. So, Commander, what did you see? Hmm, let me think. <laughs> it all started when two wannabe hustlers challenged me to a game of billiards. I have no idea who you mean, Mindy, but I resent the implication. You see, Chip, for the past month or so, HF has been scrambling up my Festivus pole for a dog park. And then today... While I was trying to relax during one of my precious few off-duty cycles with a game of Supernova, he and John B. came up with a proposition. All right, everyone. I'm out of here. Oh, oh nice, nice Mr. Yes, Drink yeah, Man. Mindy, I want a dog park, and I want it now. And I'm tired. Fix it. Fix it, fix it, fix it. Forrest. Fuzzy Tom, I can't get through one flotting pool game. We've been over this, HF. Miss Sophie has the entire off-tether section of Gimmel 8 hydroponics and the bocce ball court when it's not in use. Aw, Mindy. I'm colicky. Then take a nap or something. I don't wanna. Furthermore, I am the commander of the space station. If you have a complaint about hydroponics policies, here's a thought. Talk to the hydroponics department. We do actually have a chain of command here, believe it or not, and I'm supposed to be all the way at one end of it. Great galloping Cielo twins. Why is it that every minor quibble, grievance, or contract dispute Ends up at my console. Heavy is the head, my dear. Tell me about it. No, Commander. I meant my head appears to have become improperly calibrated, and it's bearing too much of my weight. Can you possibly drop everything on your schedule in order to do something about that? I am the Commander. Not robot maintenance. Not a Parks Department administrator. Not interested in any of this Michigas. Huge yellow sister. But Miss Sophie is the cutesiest, wootsiest doggy in the whole universe. Look at her whittle face. Look at her roll around on the ground. Look at her chase Vert. This is fine. And she can chase Vert all she wants to. Over in Gimmel 8. Having a great time. But Mom... I mean, Mindy. Uh-oh, I dropped it my pool cue. Tell you what, I'll play you for it on my next shot. I make it, no dog park, and you leave me the hell alone. I miss, yes, dog park, and you leave me the hell alone. Okay? Yay! Yay. Annoying long-winded British expression of approval. <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry, even though Arthur could have known perfectly well what would happen, Arthur will take his horribleness somewhere else, which he probably should have done in the first place. Bye, Arthur. Thanks for coming with me all over the station to disgust and horrify all the humans, and the commander in particular, as well as overloading the cleaning bots who have to clean up afterward whenever one of us gets a look at you. We should keep doing this forever. I really wish you wouldn't. Ah, oh, Commander, you make John sad. Oh, for the love of... Ugh. Never mind. Are we doing this or what? My Gibson's getting warm. Okay. I'm gonna line up my shot. 
hope the ball doesn't disappear forever when it goes into those little pockets. I don't have object permanence yet. Careful, John B. I want that doggy park. I want it, I want it, I want it! Yay! I scored in a billiards. Uh, no, John, that was a miss. Aww. Now, stand back and watch how a real pro does it. Oh, Luga, coming through, not going around, going right through. Hey, Mindy, I'm going to ask you a question later that's way below your pay grade. Get ready, make a hole. Concentrate, Mindy. Designated dog park would mean relocating the aromatherapy gardens. Probably all the way down to Tav 48. It's simple, my dear. Just hit the ball into the hole. I know how to play billiards. Weren't you in here a couple of months ago? Now would everyone just shut up for a second? All right. Now. Steady. And... Oh, crack! Jibbo's teacup hey, in the bilge! Hey, Sophie! Are you okie-dokie? We won! Like, Yippee! Yeah, oh boy. Let's oh, celebrate boy, with oh some boy, okie oh karaoke! Oh no <laughs> consequences for me! Asia, curb your dog! Uh, I don't wanna. That dumb dog broke my focus! Don't blame her. Vert stepped on her. Vert, suspend yourself from the ceiling fan. You got it! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Commandy? Where did Miss Sophie get all those cans of seltzer? Oh, what? who's a cutie pie? Oh, Miss Sophie. Who's the no, cutie drop it. little... Drop it. Oh, Girl, hang on. Bad I gotta dog. get a picture. Bad dog. Oh, don't you stop shaking that can, Oogie Woogum. Oh, good, Miss Sophie. With such a good dog, yes, you are. Who's definitely not a public nuisance and probably gonna give us all rapey. Not you. No, not you at all. Mindy, call off your goons. I'm like, who now? All of this is obviously your sole responsibility, like every single other thing that happens on this entire Fakakta station. So what are you going to do about it? Now hold on, Mindy. Miss Sophie did not start any booze fight, and you know it. Well, that's my recollection. And in any case, that dog is trouble. And everyone here knows that. Oh, we know it all right. But, Commander, I'm sorry to say I don't think your taproots made it all the way through the topsoil on this one. Taproot? It's a common expression. Um, as I was saying, this all actually started as I was minding my own business at the end of the bar. All right, everyone. I'm out of here. Uh -oh. Farewell, Chip. Or fill you up, Mrs. F? Sure, sweetie. I'll make it a double, why don't you? You got it. Bubbles? Bubbles? Hey, Bubbles. Excuse me, Bubbles? Bubbles? I'm expending energy by rubbing my disgusting throat meat strings together in an attempt to get your attention instead of merely releasing chemicals into the atmosphere. Yeah? What do you want? There's a customer who seated themselves all the way at the other end of the bar, despite all of the many bar stools which are situated closer to us, the bartenders. Well, that makes complete sense to me, what with me not being a plant and all. Mm -hmm. I'll just waste a bunch of time and electricity moving myself over there to accommodate them. So, Pon, dearie, don't you think you could organize this place a little better? I'm not sure I know how to do that. Hey, why don't you teach me? I thought you'd never ask, dearie. Let's start at the very beginning, the only acceptable place to start. When your phytohormones communicate with your cells to stimulate growth, they begin with... Auxins, gibberellins, and cytokinin. That's right! When you organize, you must begin with efficiency. Efficiency. What's the only overriding objective you should concern yourself with, regardless of the hindering and, quite frankly, adorably naive will? <coughs> of the minority. If 
I promise you won't miss some You plant yourself just like a plant And then install a mister And get nourished from the sun Good job, sister Now hold on, hold on I know some of you are dancing to this song But you just put a stop to that right now It's a needless waste of energy Don't you all know you must learn to conserve? Conserve, I say! Hey, Mrs. F, I'll admit you're making some fantastic points that should by now be obvious to everyone in this room. No, thank but you. I still don't see how this would solve the conflict between me and Chip. <laughs> Weren't you listening, dear? You need to know your place! Imagine our whole universe with one big That we'd retrofit. The ceiling would be open up, and the sun would be our view. And instead of alcohol, you'd serve nitrogen laced gruel. Of course, gruel. It's so simple. Now take it to the bridge without going anywhere. No, 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 I said no dancing. Everyone stay perfectly still. Just try to keep your outer pensions pointed towards the bar's light sources at all times. Oh, there you go, Fern. You've almost got it. Now you stop that. Just stop. I know the way the chord progression works is making you think you want to change keys, dearies. But what have I been telling you all? No. No, modulation is far too inefficient. Think of the needless mental energy wasted in having to transpose. We're all perfectly content to stay in G. Thank you very much. Ahem. And now that you're all nutrient dense and fully synchronized, you can lay your pedicles down, my dear, and slowly close your eyes. As you has ruined a perfectly good closing refrain. Shoo! Shoo! Shoo, bad girl, shoo! Hey, hey, don't you even think about relieving yourself there. I am a dignified plant. Boy, you plants sure have a funny way of looking at things. Yeah, I never knew how much better plants are at, well, uh, basically everything, according to your uh, impressively choreographed up-tempo third act number there. So what you're telling me is that the egg is in shambles because... We humans don't sit around all day photosynthesizing? Oh, is that what you got out of it? Okay. K, 
Can anyone tell me who's actually responsible for what happened here? And while you're at it, can someone get Vert down from the ceiling? Oh, thank you. And I want all of you helping the busboys pick up your poly seltzer cans. I don't care how many hands you've got. Also, what's the matter with Bubbles? I'm all gunked up. Unbelievable! When I find... John, it was you, wasn't it? What? Why do you want to pin this on me? Oh, believe me, I'd love for this to be the fault of someone who's actually worth suing for damages, but come on! You're John B., Disaster's favorite dance partner. So what did you do this time? Nothing. I, I mean, it wasn't my fault. I mean... Great shot, kid. Lucky more like it. What? No, it wasn't. Since when have I been lucky at anything? I've put in a lot of practice to get this good, right, HF? You're good, kid. But you'll never be as big a space shark as Captain Hustler over here. First of all, HF, if you can't stand the afterburn, don't try hot dogging in Beggar's Canyon. And second of all, that's Commander Hustler to you. I believe it's still your turn, old chap. All right, everyone, I'm out of here. Sure. Before you go, I need the keys to the castle. Stop. Good call. Hey, Churchill Bot, they got Supernova down in the Union break room? Ugh, table, yes. But when it comes to the game itself, I'm afraid the cubes are in desperate need of a wood refinishing and supplemental chalk detailing. A request for maintenance and possible upgrade was approved by committee, but the actual work order is still being passed around between Recreation, Carpentry, and the Tanners Guild. All of whom claim the matter is not, not their, their department. department. Yeah, <laughs> forget I asked. Hey, uh, Commander. Speaking of protocol and work orders, whose leg does Miss Sophie have to adorably hump in order to get that dog park approved over on Race 18? We've been over this, HF. Miss Sophie has the entire off-tether section of Gimel 8 hydroponics and the bocce ball court when it's not in use. Hey. I just got three more in. Yeah, one second, kid. Commander, the bocce ball court is all the way over in Bet. That's basically two-thirds of the station away. And as for the park in Gimel 8, well, you know very well those DeLoreans have basically claimed it 28 hours a day for their incessant froth tournaments. Yeah, it's jealous, sister. Those of us with companion animals of the canine persuasion need a designated space to let our pals frolic, socialize, and have their precious little piddle parties in peace. I mean, they've got to get all that energy out somehow, and if they don't have a park to do it in, well, just look at her now, bounding around, chasing Vert. Vert's happy to be included. I don't know who Vert is. Rats. Ah, you whiffed it, Johnny. Yeah, but I got all but two of our balls in, and that last shot, uh, the table told me I won some sort of award and little fireworks shot off. Really? No one saw that. No one did, and no one is impressed, old boy. Commander, you're up. I'll tell you what, HF. I'll play you for it on my next shot. I make it, no dog park, and you leave me the hell alone. I miss, yes, dog park, and you leave me the hell alone. Okay? Deal. All right. Let me just line up this shot. <laughs> hey, Althar. Althar saw for Ed's John make so many pull shots. The practicing does seem to have resulted in the paying of off. Hey, yeah. Thanks for noticing. Althar is most proud of Fred John's snookerial acumen. Ah, and you are completely obscured by that glowing St. Polyhedron girl sign, Althar. Ah, the practicing has paid off also for Althar, by contorting his fourth and seventh flexor force, producing a not unpleasant convolution of the cartilage, Althar has discovered he can reduce his carapace volume by 0.8 microns. An increase to Althar's geometrical understanding has been a most fortuitous side effect of the continued room meeting with Fred John. You don't say. Hey! Are we gonna sit around jabbering like a herd of Carolian walkies? Or are we gonna play some pool? Althar, would you mind stepping away from the table for the next five minutes or so? 
It's really hard to concentrate on lining up a shot when I have to constantly suppress my gag reflex. Oh, a apology to you from Elthar. He will absent himself from the gentle being's parlor at once and begin again to mingle with the large variety of sapiens now enjoying the delicious purveyances of the electric egg. The mingling has been of great success already. Elthar has made friendship with a priest. A pleasant evening to you all, friends. A priest? Twenty-four bottles of space beer, all wall. Twenty-four bottles of space beer. Thanks, Althar. Let yeah. me just. You'll just shoot that ball into the hole. I'm trying. If you just let me concentrate and. Ah, and that's a miss. <laughs> what do we call this dog park, Mindy? I'm thinking Logan's Dog Run. Or is that too dark? Hey, no, that one doesn't count. I was distracted by a series of loud noises. What series of loud noises? That series of loud noises. What? That hadn't happened yet. I don't make the rules, Hardy Fox. Or rather, yes, I do, because I'm the commander of this station, and I say, re-rack. <laughs> Miss Sophie, you stop that. Give it up, Commander. You lost fair and square. It's okay, Commander. I can just... I'm telling you, HF, I was distracted. Distracted my left reticulum. I don't think you're going to get anywhere with this, HF. Let's just play another... Okay. So I guess we've at least established that Sopan tripped over Miss Sophie. But that still doesn't explain who actually started the fight, or how that drink exploded. Perhaps Althar's recollection of these events could be of some utility? Althar would be most willing to make sharing of it, if this would reduce the confusion that is causing the stress rash to Mr. Chip Frinkel. Stress rash? Oh, frill me, not again. It is not to worry, Mr. Frinkel. The stress hives are providing a most pleasantly ruddy appearance, like the human deity Nicholas. The who now? Uh, Saint Nick. He means Santa. Yes, the Santa. But without the subcutaneous stomach tissue resembling a container full of gelatin, rather Mr. Frinkel is resembling the Santa who is performing very frequently the crossfit. But good cheer is instigated nonetheless. Great. Could you just tell me what happened, Althar? And, uh, no one look at me for a few seconds. Where's that topical Dr. Nubarge prescribed? Elthar would be most pleased to do so. It all began as Elthar was enjoying an evening of wholesome camaraderie with his many dear friends at the Electric Egg. All right, everyone. I'm out of here. Farewell. Hey, see you later, Chip. Yes. That's you. To you. It is a great joy to Althar to be engaging in vibrations with his three newest friends. Cheers! Score! The yeah, I am. So, Father Gersma Blurgen of Our Lady of the Many Severed Appendages of Screaming Death, please continue description of the customs of your most unusual religious practice. Althar regrets very much that he has not, as of yet, made study of the Disciples of Tranquility and Luminosity. Ah, well, good Iltorian. The initiation into our order begins on one's 26th birthday. Those who are blessed to receive the mark of Trafalna Wolfi and Tuss on their left temple are ushered off to the priestly training grounds where a gaggle of nuns attend to their education. Nuns? But if it is the priestly training grounds, are there not priests also? Oh no, my child, they are conspicuously absent. You know, it is most refreshing to have someone ask about our oblations. Normally people run screaming in terror. The moment they lay their organs of perceptions upon our traditional vestment. Oh, 
author has experienced this phenomenon on many occasions. It is an unfortunate side effect of Arthur's attempt to make friendship with a species mm. that cannot be seeing him without great bodily distress. Arthur and his dear human friends have created many workings around in order to mitigate this, but it is an ongoing process. Yes, friendship is also one of our 43 guiding principles of unseen obesity. Here you go, hon. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but who's that tall glass of Molson behind that there bar? The robotic bartender. That is the very talented and most efficient mixology bot, Bubbles. She is also well practiced at the purveyance of salty snack foods and the chatting up of the customer base. She is a fixture of the electric egg in both the literal and figurative senses. Ooh, I wouldn't mind swapping gaskets with her, eh? Excuse me, gentle bots, and my good Deltorian pal. I believe I'll go asking for a drink there. Uh, wish me luck, boys. Much luck mm. to see Woodsman Bot in the requesting of refreshments! <clears throat> anyway, uh, once we are ordained, we are sent out to cross the galaxy, accompanied with nothing but a collection basket in our leftmost appendage. And the book of the truisms of the prophet of bleeding orify in our right. Fascinating! And what is collected in these baskets? Why, we collect arms, my child. Arms? And legs. Arms and legs, or any other appendages that you can spare. The one of much anointment needs them all in order to keep his mind space focused on the infinite putrescence of the beyond. It is a great regret to Althar that he cannot be sparing any of his pedipalps or flixitors uh, for oh his yeah. new friend Father Gurth Mablurgen of Our Lady of the Many Severed Appendages mm. of Screaming Death. Regeneration of shed limbs is not a property of the Eltorian anatomy. You challenge, sister! That is all right, my child. It is enough that you occasionally reflect upon the disgusting insignificance of your mortality. Arthur will do so! And whilst the basket of collection is full, it is given directly to the one of much anointment? Correct, dear gentle being. The collection is offered up to them on a vibro plank of gratitude. Excuse me, Arthur. Father, I'm just grabbing some more poly seltzer from the back. You want another one? Oh, well, my child, is it not written that long ago when Blotfast the Ancient One came down from on high, he Let's was say, yes, yes, no. uh, uh, yes, yes. Pardon me, fellas? Please be excusing Althar also, Father. His roommate, Fred John, appears to be engaged in an act of schooling at the table of billiards, ah. and Althar is wishing to go and provide support. Of course, my child. Many contemptuous horrors and herniated discs to you. I shall pass the time with my fellow commoner bot here. Hey, is this anyone's baby? Salutation to you, human and robot friends, and vert. Oh, and greeting to Miss Sophie also. We missed you, buddy. What have you been up to? Oh, that's so friend, John, makes so many pool shots. The practicing does seem to have resulted in the paying of off. Hey, yeah. Thanks for noticing. Oh, that is most proud of Fred John's snookerial acumen. Ah, and I appreciate the way you're completely obscured by that glowing St. Polyhedron girl sign, Althar. Good job. Yes, the practicing has paid off also for Althar. By contorting his fourth and seventh flexitors, producing a not unpleasant convolution of the cartilage, Alpha has discovered he can reduce his carapace volume by 0.8 microns. An increase to Alpha's geometrical understanding has been a most fortuitous side effect of the continued roommating with Fred John. And I keep learning new ways to get projectile vomit stains out of carpet thanks to you, knowledgeable friend Althar. I'm constantly amazed how much each of our species has to learn from one another. Wanna watch us play some pool, esteemed diplomatic colleague? Oh, Alpha would enjoy this greatly, but 
far is knowing that when a game of billiards is in session, it is most uncouth for a new player to insert himself into the proceedings. He will absent himself from the gentle being's parlor at once and begin again to mingle with the large variety of sapiens now enjoying the delicious purveyances of the electric egg. The mingling has been of great success already. Avar has made friendship with a priest. A pleasant evening to you all, friends. A priest? Friend Althar, I'm always amazed at your ability to make new friends wherever you go. Yes, John. It's always important to remember that with patience and goodwill, common ground can be established between all sapients in the galaxy. Thanks, Althar. Now let me just line up this shot and... Whoa! Oh, is the delightful Miss Sophie all right? Oh, oh, oh dear, please, please don't chase me! of suspending yourself above the reach of Miss Sophie until her agitation has decreased. Uh, all good. Uh. Then, if Althar is not needed, you will... Oh, since Sopan, may Althar perhaps make assistance to you? Thanks, Althar. Oh, crap. Looks like Bubbles is having trouble handling the line. Would you mind grabbing the rest of these while I... Yes! Althar can perform gathering of the disordered beverage cylinders while you are attending your other duties. Please! Do not have concern. Althar is most content to be of usefulness. Thanks, Althar. Oh, new friend, Father Gersma Blurgen. One of these cans of non-alcoholic polycarbonate waters Althar is remembering is for you. Well, bless you, my child. So thoughtful. Such a good memory. And these other cans must belong at the bar with the gregarious and hard-working scene soap on. Please be excusing Alpha, Father. Sin Sopan! Boom! Fight! Sin Sopan! Alpha, help me remainder of your kind beverages! Where should he be depositing them, please? So, you don't actually know how the booze fight started either? Or why Bubbles is clogged up? Or why D was favoring you all with the galaxy's least requested a cappella number the whole time. Hmm. Arthur is realizing now that his perspective is perhaps of more limited utility than he had at first assumed. Mr. Ferenkel, Arthur is wishing to beg your forgiveness. No, it's fine, Arthur. We'll just have to go through this whole thing one more time. So again, let me ask. Did anyone see anything that could help me understand just what the jack happened in this bar while I was out? Well, Chip, if you really want to know exactly what was going on from the vantage point of every single entity inside this bar simultaneously, you could always allow me to project the information directly into your consciousness. I promise not to touch anything else while I'm in there that you'll notice. Yeah, right. You're even more out of touch with this level of reality than usual if you think I'm going to let some twinkly effluvium fool around with my mind. Even if that's literally the only way I'll ever know what really went on in here. Hey, Vert! Let Frawl into your brain! You got it, boss! It was merely a suggestion, Chip. I don't wish to intrude on Vert's cavernous mental space. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Great. Thanks for nothing. Okay, then. Let's do this systematically. Start at the entrance and make our way through the egg one person at a time. Which means first on deck are those security meatheads who are trying to put Miss Sophie and a half Nelson in the corridor. Let's get them in here. Hey, Stops. Got a couple of Barneys inbound. You good? As long as they vibe with the authorities cannot apprehend bar goers decree. Okay. Let's find out if they've got anything useful to say. All right, jabronis, you're allowed in, but the ACAB rule's still in effect. Got it? Why do you think we're posted right outside? Come on, Ness. We don't need to tell them our secret system. It's not a secret. It's obvious and dumb. And so far, it's netted you exactly one suspect who, again, is a non-sapient companion animal. 
So would you please tell us all exactly what led to you wrestling a cocker spaniel in the Lama Three Quarter? Affirmative, sir. It all started when I and my fellow officer detected with our oral receptors a possible explosion emanating from the approximate area of this drinking establishment and multicultural eatery. Officer Ness and I visually observed the door opening and a suspect exiting the establishment through said door. Suspect was approximately one foot, two inches tall, hair brown and white, eyes brown, sex indeterminate. Motive for criminal activity also indeterminate. Criminal activity. We had reason to believe the suspect was engaged in illicit activities by way of the loud disturbance we had heard inside the establishment and also predicated on the suspect's rapid movement away from the area. Or maybe she was just a dog running away from a loud noise. That had not occurred to us, sir. But we had to act quickly. Our lives were being threatened. How? Commander, the individual in question matched the description of a known criminal believed to be currently residing on the fairgrounds who we had reason to believe would be in the electric egg this evening. Miss Sophie matched the description of a known criminal. Yes, sir. A carbon-based mammalian individual between 9 inches and 8 foot 3 inches in height. A perfect match! Use of defensive measures was clearly indicated by security protocols, sir. You can't be too careful, Commander. It seems like you can. As the suspect exited the establishment, Officer Dormer and I apprehended them by brandishing our neuro dampers in a very professional and not at all panicky manner. The suspect then abandoned their escape attempt and proceeded to jump up on us. At which point we were forced to defend ourselves. We could have apprehended her peacefully before then, but we're not allowed in the bar. It hurts our feelings, actually. Let me get this straight. You two were loitering outside the door all night. Patrolling! And pulled your neuro dampers on the first individual to come out the door? Yes. Because... We just want to be included. Well, congratulations. You're going to be included in a disciplinary filing first cycle tomorrow. Oh, Oh, man. man. Seriously, Mindy. Do you really think it's a good idea for these blockheads to be walking around with weapons? I'm increasingly asking myself that question. Oh, Oh, man. man. We'll discuss this further tomorrow. Now, get out of here and... No more skulking around the corridor outside the egg for no reason. Understand? Not for no reason, sir. No. Let me be clear. Being in the mood to arrest someone is not a reason. But our quotas. We'll never get the steak knives at this rate. All right, officers. Thank you for your complete lack of help. Now please get lost. Beat it. And that's why the egg cab decree is in perpetual effect, Zeus. Okay. Stops. Where were you when all this was going on? Please, don't make me regret asking. No frills, the super mercado, Zood. I believe I can dressage that particular pony. You see... It all started when I got those sweet keys to the back office. Hey, you two. I'm going to be out for a while. Got to pick up a package. So are you good for the next hour or so? I don't know, man. I'm running low on the slow-mo flow, you know? I do not. But I'm assuming you're talking about the nutty stuff. Well, if you're in need of a pick-me-up, there's something that might be of interest in the office. You should check out the special drawer. Of my desk. Get it? Repetez-vous? The special drawer of my desk. I'll give you the key if that keeps you cranking out the tunes while I'm out. You got a deal. I can keep it real. What about me, Chip? Sure. You can have some peanut butter if you want. Har har. I meant, how am I supposed to finish our set if Stops is in your office getting glitched? See you later! 
Unbelievable. Yeah, this shank of the cycle is a king-size flake. That's why I keep trying to get you to join me in the astral plane. Turn your eyes inside and dig the vacuum. I don't have the knack for remembering songs when I'm three sheets to the solar wind like you, Stops. Just be sure you join me on stage after break, okay? We're supposed to have each other's backs, no matter how big the monkey on yours is. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm out of here. Chorp, I need the keys to the castle. Oh, right. Good call. Let me get this nutty oil for the crab boil. Know what I mean, sis? Yeah, yeah, do what you gotta do, but just get back here in five. Let's see here. Special drawer, eh? Ah, a special key is my special tea. Ooh, chorp, you magnificent sort. I see you've got that good brittle brittle. But where's that? Come on, Drawer, I know you're holding out on me. Ooh, yeah. Just what the attorney advised. One dropper's good for a dapper dude, but just to be safe, best take three. Good to be back. Hey, I didn't know Chorp had one of those doors to the exact center of consciousness installed back here. Welcome back, Starks. We've missed you. Now, if I can name that tune correctly, each of these bottles holds one secret of the universe. What have we got in this dusty little friendo? No way. I'm the musician. I'm all musicians. I keep time. Time. Ha! Time can't be kept, man. Free time. I hear you being of light. Time should be free. What will you lay down when I unscrew your lid? Flop, boy, zoo, what do you mean? And then they just seize the means of production? So it is possible. Gary Marks was right. Right on, Dr. Avalanche. I got the fool for the transformation. Oh, what about this shining on Doesn't matter what the recipe says. Add as much garlic as you want. Messenger. Messenger? I better answer. Your amplitude. Of course. Your amplitude in the Four thousand flagellations. I never thought I'd reach the exact center. My most sublime cherry lime. Stop! Oh, whoa, man. Deep fried and crusty. You've been ungrateful, Stops. And now I won't give you a wooden tray for Zimbus. Why did you never write to me? Oh, hey. Didn't you glob my messages, Zoo? You have forsaken me, Stops! What? No, man! I sang the five-way Kanzio to you every lunar cycle! And still, when little shops went to peek under the pole of the wayward blessing, my blessing pot was bone dry. Sing it to me now, Stops! Regale the ancient ones with your voices! Yes! Yes! More! This pleases me! When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city. Would you 
like me to tell you a future shot? Whisper it loud, Mabel Brink. Nod, man. Ultra nod. Three times the raven shall realize the discotheque. Be your best on St. Coltrane's day, and only the young die good. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage the illustrious Stops. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. No. That is not what happened at all. I saw what I saw, man. If you saw it, that means it definitely didn't happen. Chip, here's what really went down. Hey, you two. I'm gonna be out for a while. Gotta pick up a package. So are you good for the next hour or so? I don't know, man. I'm running low on the slow-mo flow, you know? I do not. But I'm assuming you're talking about the nutty stuff? Well, if you're in need of a pick-me-up, there's something that might be of interest in the office. Look in the special drawer of my desk. Get it? Repetez-vous? The special drawer of my desk. I'll give you the key if that keeps you cranking out the tunes while I'm out. You got a deal. I can keep it real. What about me, Chip? Sure. You can have some peanut butter if you want. Har har. I meant... How am I supposed to finish our set if Stops is in your office getting glitched? See you later. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hmm? Sorry, D, I wasn't paying, like, any attention. Gee, thanks. Like, at all. Ever. Got it. Okay, buddy. We still got another hour to kill. Think you can manage to not leave me hanging like last time? We're supposed to have each other's backs, no matter how big the monkey on yours is. I'll never be your creaky gate, D. <laughs> oh yeah? You don't remember last week when you totally F.O.'d and I was stuck repeating the same three songs for five hours until you charged the stage singing Carmina Burana? Ooh, right. You kept calling for backup. I sure did. But O Fortuna does not remotely sync up with Happy by Pharrell. Agree to disagree. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm out of here. Sorry, Sorry. 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 I need the keys to the castle. Oh, right. Good call. Let me get this nutty oil for the crab boil. Know what I mean, sis? Yeah, yeah. Do what you gotta do. Just get back here in five. I ran through my whole acapella repertoire during your stunt last week. The only thing left now is 28 bottles of space beer on the wall. Groovy tune. No, it is not. It is not a groovy tune. It is very boring and terrible and nobody likes it. That's why I eliminated 71 of the bottles. Do not make me do that again. You have my word as a scholar and a gentle being. I'll be our B, mon chérie. Okay. Hey there, electric eggers, eggites, eggisins. Anyway, my associate here is just going to grab a quick snack and we'll be back in business. So sit tight. All right, stops, go on. But we took five three minutes ago, so you'd better make it snappy. Oh, stops will make it skippy. Okay. Where's my triple parsec and soda? Did that zib yoink my drink too? Frill me. You tell him, sister. <sighs> Thanks, Quants. How you been? <laughs> tell me about it. You coming around for the jitterbug dance off tomorrow? <laughs> Oh, I didn't know Quizio was doing ballet. How old is she now? 
145 already? Wow, time really flies, huh? <laughs> at least some time does. I feel like I've already been at this gig for an eternity and a half. <laughs> Thanks, Quants. Oh, break's over. And surprise, surprise, Stops is still back in Chip's office getting randomized. All right, good talk, Quants, but I gotta go sing... something. Sans accompaniment. Again. <laughs> Thanks. Ahem. Hi. Looks like it's just you and me, Electric Egg, so... <sighs> I'm sure you all remember this classic number from the early days of space exploration. 28 bottles of space beer on the wall, 28 bottles of space beer. Stops, any second now. Come on, you know the words. If one of those bottles should happen to fall and the gravity field is working at all, 27 bottles of space beer on the wall. Oh, hey, there's my drink. Folks, if you'll bear with me, I'm just gonna take a pause for a... for... a quick... sip... while my partner... Okay, he's still not here. So, how about one more verse? Hmm? Bottoms up. Hey, Bubbles, can you make me another one of these dealies? I have a feeling it's going to be a long night. Okay, here we go now. Verse two. Got it through. 27 bottles of space beer on the wall. 27 bottles of space beer. No one's gonna sing along with me, huh? All right, fine. Just thought I'd throw it out there. If one of those bottles should happen to fall and the gravity field is working at all, 26 bottles of space beer on the wall. Don't you all look at me like that. I'm doing my best up here, and what thanks do I get? A round of applause? If I'm lucky. Thank you, Quants. Okay, next verse. 26 bottles of space beer on the wall. 26 bottles of space beer. Sing it with me, Quats. If one of those bottles should happen to fall, a gravity field is working at all. What, Sopan? Yeah, I think you need to check on your partner in there. Something's up. Well, something's more up with him than normal. I'm not surprised, but as you can see, I found someone else to sit in for the evening. So as far as I'm concerned, that self-centered PBJ can go jump in a centrifuge. Come on, Quants. 25 bottles of space here on the wall. Well, it would appear that at least one of y'all knows how to have a good time, so me and my pal Quants here are going to keep tearing this joint down all by ourselves. Hey! Play beyond Uranus with a fleece porp sola. Okay, one, go frill yourself. And two, do you see me holding a fleece borp? Bummer. What about some dub walls? You tell me how that would work without a pair of tachyon splitter turntables. Hey, Quants, what say we hit him with another verse? <laughs> 24 <laughs> bottles of space here on the what the crap? Sorry, Quants. Sounds like Stops really did manage to get weirder than usual back there. I better see what's up. Could you keep it going for me? I'll spell you as soon as I can. Stops. Uh, great. Oh, what the meckle is this now? Stops. Stops. Buddy. 
Everything's fine. You're all right. You're in Chip's office, surrounded by... Bottles? <sighs> You're sitting under the desk in a huge pile of bottles, Zood. <laughs> That's right. Think you can hoist yourself a little closer to reality for me, bud? At least enough so you can tell one end of a fleece board from the other? <laughs> Great. Cause I'm dying out there. Drinking bottles of space beer is one of those bottles should happen to To carry on, to carry on, to carry on. Flop, damn it. To carry on, to carry on. And then you just kept singing that over and over. Until the priest in the bloodstained robes opened one of those seltzer cans that Sopan dropped, which exploded all over the place. Which of course those DeLoreans over there took to mean time to act like a bunch of frat butts. <laughs> At which point you collapsed into a heap muttering about Zibidonk Christmas or something. You mean I didn't really see the ungrudging Baroxidana? Not today, Zood. Today you saw the underside of Chip's desk and whatever was in those old as earth bottles he's been saving for a special occasion. Wait a minute, what? Yeah, you know. The dusty ones with the corks from the back of the supply room. I was saving those for when I retired to the Trifluvian Beach Satellite Islands. You can't keep the secrets of the universe in bottles in the supply room, man. It's not right. I'll deal with you later, your radiance. So anyway, there you have it, Chip. As you and everyone here can see, I was not wasted. I saw the whole thing go down from my perfect vantage point, alone on stage. Okay, yeah, I think we've got every piece of the puzzle now, except for one. Why is Bubbles full of maple syrup? Oh gosh, so embarrassing. I uh, think I can help clearing up that there mystery there, eh? I'm sorry. Who are you now? Oh, yes! The robot with the flannel decalcomania and the large axe was speaking with Alvar and Father Grosmabler again earlier. Alvar must make apology that he was not catching your name, robot friend. I just hear a friendly neighborhood woodsman about there. So uh, here's my yarn for you. I was out and about having a rip with that there space priest when I happened to know this is the prettiest two for a labata I ever did lay my sensors on beyond at that there bar. So I naturally went to chatting her up and, uh, well... Hey, uh, haven't seen the likes of you in here before. What can I get you? Heidi ho that's some pretty impressive pouring you're doing there. Mm-hmm. I got the fastest pour in the Western Spiral on. Oh, yeah? Well, that there's quite a statement. I don't suppose you can back it up. Why don't you sit back and just watch me? Done. 4.8 nanoseconds. Tap dancing, Tommy Douglas. That's a super fast porter. But uh, tell me, can you do it with other liquids? What do you mean? I mean, I got 6.4 metric liters of pure uncut Ontario gold in my reserve tank. I'd love to see me a robo girly who knows her way around that stuff. Are you implying you think you're too much for me to handle? I mean, how would I know unless you showed me? Ooh, right here at the bar. If you wouldn't mind, that is. It's my other specialty. All right. All right. All right. All right! I think I get the picture. Woodsman Bot, you usually walk around with a tank full of syrup? Well, uh, now I'm filled with tonic. And I feel three upgrades younger. Uh, those tubes are gonna take forever to flush out. Sorry, boss. I... I thought I could handle it. Bubbles! Just... Next time you want to expand your personal horizons, do it on your own personal time. I mean, I live here. So! Seems like this disaster was pretty much everyone's fault. For being their typical, clumsy, distracted, drugged out, bogged down, stirred up, 
or, in the case of Ulthar, excessively helpful selves. That about right? Great! I'm never leaving the bar again! You've been listening to Life with Althar, episode 19. This episode was written by John Amir and Lex Friedman for Gemini Collision Works and starred Chris Lee as Chip Frankel, Barrett Johnson as Althar, Derek Peterson as Stops, Ivana Cullinan as Commander Toriana, Amanda Lapergola as Mrs. Frondernax, Eli Ganias as HF, Surrey Washington as D, John Amir as John B, and Alyssa Simon as Lieutenant Commander Frawl, and also featured Philip Cruz, Holly Pocket McCaffrey, Ian W. Hill, Lex Friedman, and Linus Gelber. Life with Althar was created by Barrett Johnson and Ian W. Hill. Barrett is the supervising producer, showrunner, and script supervisor. Ian is the audio producer, sound designer, and technical supervisor. The writer's room consists of Barrett, Ian, John, Amanda, Chris, Philip, Lex, and Linus. Theme and interstitial music composed and performed by Anna Stefanik. Life with Althar logo and illustration by Dean Haspiel. The Better World Song, composed by John, arranged by Barrett. And special thanks to Julie Hoverson for the inspirational tweet. Library music and sound effects licensed from Storyblocks. The entire production is copyright 2020 Gemini Collision Works. We'll be back in two weeks with more from all our friends on the fairgrounds. But right now, who's this mysterious stranger checking into a cheap spotel in Somac 51? Welcome to the Siatmak Spotel. Siatmak, a place you might as well be. What do you want? Yes, I have a reservation. Flitcraft. Charles Flitcraft? A reservation? What kind of joint do you think this is? Oh, look at that. Flitcraft. Paying in advance for three days. That one you'll be checking out? I... I don't know just yet. I may be here longer. Maybe much longer. Yeah, okay, I don't need your life story, pal. Here's the key, it's the last door on the left. Bathrooms at the end of the hall, no cooking in the pods, no audible beeping after 23.20 p.m. Enjoy your stay. Uh, hello? Is someone in here? Hello? Yes. Hello? What? Who? No, my name's Flitcraft. I don't know any Bigelow. Who are you? What do you want? Mr. Bigelow? What? No!